the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Right. So in verse 25, it said, look, wait, okay. We, we got we got in trouble, but we got an unknown number of people joined together in oneness in the spirit. But particularly in a local congregation, when you have people who are in close proximity to each other, dealing with each other, you're going to have these, these issues that come up because we're talking about relationships. Relationships, yeah. So he said that there should be no schism in the body. Yeah. But the people should have the same care one for another. And where one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or, or, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Right. Uh, now he now he's gonna he's gonna clarify something for, for you. He said, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Yeah. And God has set. God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophet, thirdly teacher, that's the that miracles, then gift of healing, health, government, diversity of tongue. What he goes mm -hmm. on to show now is, is that not everybody has the same gift. Right. He's hammering that diversity. Now it started out in chapter 12 talking about diversity in gifts, diversity in administration. No, diversity in gifts, diversity in administration, I think in diversity in operation. Gifts, administration, and operation, diversity fills each one of those areas. Mm -hmm. The body is filled with diversity of gifts among the members. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now, what he wants to show now is we don't all have the same gift. Not all, of, not all apostle, not all a prophet, not all that he goes on. So not all. But but now, what he's really trying to have home home is, is that though not all have the same uh, gift, yet all must have love. Yeah. You, you, Bishop, can I can I say this? I think it even goes back to chapter eleven. I think it, it because he's talking about the division between the man and the woman, the husband and the wife. I think it starts there, and then it, and it flows right on into to twelve and thirteen. Yeah, because that, that's also where the Lord the Lord's Supper was at too. Was there too? So what I'm saying is, before I can get to the CIT, you see, uh -huh. see I have to go back, and I had to break down chapter twelve. Because I knew he was trying, I knew he was trying to hammer home oneness. Uh -huh. Okay, so why why is he why is he so bent on oneness? But then I thought, okay, division. Uh, you you think about one of the number one problems that exists in a church, any church, is division. I mean, yeah. Yeah. division is about it, everything. Right. Is about what we what 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 kind of uh, food we ought to be having for for. I mean, just division on everything. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, exactly. You think about, look, you, if you look at us, even in this group, in trying to come up with CRT, you see the threat of the enemy to bring in division. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> amen. 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 <laughs> so, so Paul, Paul is dealing with a very real problem, but he had he has he has much experience in this thing called. He understands. He, he was part of, the, of a division. Yeah. He was part on the side where he didn't believe that Christ was the Messiah. Right. Right. And so he got history that enabled him to be able to be used of God to discern division and deal with it. And deal with it. Right. So you're right. And, and loving that, but, but as you're saying, is that verse 18 was saying the fact that first of all, when you come together in church out here, that there is division among you. Yeah. And, yeah. and, look, look, and look, I really believe it. <laughs> Paul's very introduction into this new covenant was yeah. based on his division, yeah. his encounter with Christ. Why, yeah. why does thou persecute it? Yeah, yeah. 
Now, that, that was his, his 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 introduction into this dispensation of this Bible was was based off of division, mm. and it was addressed specifically by Jesus Christ. Yes, and and Christ died when they did the Lord's Supper. He was trying to show that oneness is required. And why do you come to the Lord's Supper? Do you remember from me? What about me? I died for you. Right? Why did you die? Why did you die? For, for, our, for our life, right? No, why? Wow. God so loved the world that he gave ah, so yes, the dead word is again. That love, right? Come right back into it again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, that, that was powerful. And, and you know, it's funny when he said, you know, that in that when we read 13, the fact is that he, he you know, 15 said, you gotta, you gotta dwell in Him, right? Dwell in who? God. Yeah. And He talking about it. We have to dwell in love. When we dwell in love, we dwell in God. You, there, there's a driver behind everything that everybody's doing. You know, for one reason or another, we we engage ourselves in activities. And I think in in, in situations in concerning the kingdom, if your core motivation ain't love. You, regardless of what your manifestation of that motivation might be, you might raise your voice to somebody. You might expose some, what, let's say, scripture given for correction, for exhortation, for instruction. It's not always a pleasant word you're going to get. I believe right. that out of love, Jesus Christ called the scribes and Pharisees with Christ. Right. I don't think he hated me having reason to. <laughs> well, what, what, it would have been a waste of time. I mean, you could have destroyed him if you wanted to, but. I don't think he had a bone to pick with them, but they were wrong. They were wrong, right. And he knew that they were destroying themselves in, in, in the manner they were going about doing things. So it was more so for their, their correction than it was for some self edification on his part. He didn't want that the error didn't help him. Mm. It helped them. And so I think that when we were motivated from that perspective, if I want to point out an error in somebody, if I'm led to point out an error in somebody else's life, the scripture says that what um, do so in the spirit of meekness. Meekness, yeah. Yeah, do it, do it. Motivated by the love of God, you talk to people in accordance with that spirit that's driving you. And if that spirit ain't love, then it's probably not time to talk. Right. But I think I think that's a good rule of thumb is that if I don't get nothing about this person, let somebody else minister to them. Get out the way and let somebody do some effective ministry to them. You know. Right. If you can't, if you can't share love, like that movie talking about that, that time you were talking about the Megan brothers, the shooting, right? Yeah. There, there was a, there was a dissatisfaction in your response that that that, that you you didn't put all of us in the same category. You put that as black folks uh, opposed to the fact of those people in that area. And then it's funny. You know, and the reason I was trying to figure out why it is that I clumped those together, why I have a tendency to do that. Yeah. I guess there's certain laws on the book in this nation that come together. Like there's amendments in place that say if you black, you ain't voting. You know, unless there's some amendments still. If you are of a certain complexion of certain heritage, you gotta have an amendment to the constitution for you to cast the ballot. And so that in a sense kind of clumps us together as a people whether we want to be, or if that's the only commonality we might have. Uh -huh. But there's something about this this social structure. That identifies a certain people as a subculture in this nation and clumps them together and deals with them in accordance with that that those are laws. And even though we may not see each other as you know being united in that regard, the nation does. And it deals with us in accordance with that. So I think I probably overemphasized that when I when I start speaking speaking to us as a people. Right. In other yeah. words, you you're disappointed and that was the vision. You're yeah. highlighting in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that division is still, again, overcome by the love of God. Because even though we see brothers and sisters that we might not identify with their behavior, whether we identify with them as a subculture or not, by a nation, there's still something about them that we should find value in. Right. That the love of God should be telling us, I, I want that one over there. I need you to go get him. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. when I came home, my neighbors in the yard just said, hey, the <laughs> Lord still love him. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and I let the love, love of God motivate me. <laughs> Who knows what it's going to turn out to be? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I like about that. 
And, and you know, bitch, I think that's why I, I kind of key even when I was telling you about the AC, my concept of talking about that central idea of the text. The, the piece that most that gets me the most is it bears, enduring, believing, hopeless, all things, and on top of that, it never fails. Yeah, but if, if you haven't done the research, see, that's what I'm trying to get you to see. If you haven't done the research, then your CRT is really, it very, you really like it. It could be. It, it's, the, it's the research. This is the thing I'm trying to get you to see. You, you can write all the CRTs you want to. Mm -hmm. But if you if if you've not done the work, then your CRT is not going to reflect the truth that the Spirit of God is trying to communicate in that text. Mm -hmm. And all this discussion we're having now, it really you got nothing to measure it against. Well, you see, when we looked at the the previous scripture, it was proven to be that that was going to be effective at resolving the issue that they were dealing with there. So it's almost like a theory when the theory is put in place. But well, it's a hypothesis and then theory, but when it's put in place, you keep trying it. And every time you try it, it still, you know, pans out to be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah so what, and what I was looking at the CIT is when we formulate the CIT, it should be something that's testable throughout the scripture and come throughout up with the same conclusion. Yeah. Right. I thought and, that was uh, that too. Yeah. Agreed. And I like what you said it's a foundational system. Right. Yeah, yeah it's a foundation. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it holds it all together. Because, like I said, I think I said that you, I, I, I would challenge it if anyone could come back and, 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 and come up with something too totally different. But it really goes back to the fact is that love is greater than all things. That That's basically what, matter of fact, if we go to the actual text of the, of the uh, let's go ahead and read it. Well, see, that's obvious because if, if God is love, then what is greater than God? Come on, brother. Come so, on. So, I mean, that's that's just an obvious statement. It is. My it's my exactly my whole thing, you know, this this all began with a thought. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that thought was, let us make man <laughs> in our own image, right? In our own image. Come on, brother. In Come our own on. Likeness. <laughs> so that that that's where this all began. Yeah. I think um, and then it it grew from that. So it is this this particular uh chapter and verse verses uh man it 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 requires some deep meditation if if you're gonna write something that's going to contain 13, I mean, 1 through 13, <laughs> in chapter 13, I mean, how? You know, I think when you look at the whole context of the, from, like you said, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, you, you, you it, it brings you right back to this chapter and the fact of what love is about. I mean, let's read it so we can... Really, of course, but as it, it's only one to thirteen anyway. Just, just, just take it from that perspective. Uh, oh. even, but even when you read it, uh huh. Even when you read it, you you have to read it in light of eleven and twelve. Yeah. Otherwise, your your reading is just. Yeah, it's it's like opening up a book. And reading, I think, just book. just thumb through a page and stop, and then start reading. But 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 did you notice that there seemed to be an abrupt change in his in his conversation when he went from 11 and 12 to 13? Yeah. Because it's like he he's, he's specific about what the issues were in 11 and 12. Yeah. But when he gets to 13, it's like, yeah, we got all that going on over here. But this right here, this yeah. is it. This this, 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 this the joint right here. Right. <laughs> if you can get this, and 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 it, and it, and it really did fix everything that he he stated oh, prior right. to it yeah. so what it should do is throughout the bible this scripture this little block of scripture 1 through 13 should if it's a effect, if it's a legitimate cid it yeah. should be applicable throughout the entire book exactly that's how i was looking at it is that the concept of what he did you know so that's what i was thinking in fact is like if brother I said, if, just read it for a second i understand what this is saying but let's just just see it. Let's, let's hear it. So everybody else know what okay. we're doing. 
<clears throat> Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. I am nothing. Ooh. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. You know what? I mean, why do you use the word charity anyway? It could have been substituted for love. But to, to that, I, you know, think about it when we, when we try to look at it in the study. Because it's, in, in my point, I think he was trying to make the point that there is an action uh, uh, behind this love. It requires something. Mm, mm. It requires something of you. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Yes, I know. I mean, different. Oh, do we have a CIT? Well, I, 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 I well, well hey, Bishop, hey, Bishop. I, I, challenge, this... I, I challenge my CIT because I still say it, it still, it still has. I, I still have to tell somebody to get some I don't, I don't know if you can get anything better than the one I put up there. I'm not challenging to say it's not. What I'm saying is that I don't think no matter how much he says you got to, you are not going to go past, but even Elvis, when he says foundation is, is, is love. I think that when you put that out. Uh, yeah, the, the love is the foundation of our belief system. The love is that what that, that, so that's what 13, 1 through 13 is, is saying. <laughs> He said no. He challenged it, but I, look. All I can tell you is this: after this discussion, it's all of us that that's not what he's saying. What <laughs> he said? <laughs> what, you talking about even mine or, or, or elders? I think both of us kind of covered the same. Here's this very simple foundation. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if you write a CRT and you do and you didn't do that background work, then. You, you gotta understand your CIT can't be in, all encompassing. I, I think you know, what's kind of interesting about that's all, this. That's all I'm saying. The sim, the sim if I wrote CIT and I didn't do level and twelve, uh, if I didn't like and review level and twelve, if I just wrote the CIT on thirteen, it would be seriously lacking. Because I, could, because I don't know why he's talking about love. Okay, but even if you knew what he's talking about love. It wouldn't change that that center. Oh, I see. Would it? Like this, what I'm saying is, in the God's kingdom, love is greater than hope and faith. 
Why? That's not gonna change. No, why?